Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and I am finally ready to start the Near and Far playthrough using the Amber Mines expansion. Now someone mentioned that I am actually using the character mode sheets and that's right but I already wrote on them so we're just going to use them. So when you do the character mode of the game you actually would read G1 from the book. We're not going to do that. We'll just leave it as is. Now I'm also going to be honest, why I waited almost a week to start this playthrough is because I purchased the Meeple Source upgrade for this game. <laughs> yeah, because I like to show you guys what these stuff, this stuff looks like. So you're going to see that. You might not see that if you buy your own copy, just letting you know. But you might see some items that look a little upgraded, like these cool little quest tokens are now little Meeple tokens. Yeah, pretty cool. After getting feedback from people that have watched the first video, I decided to keep these four artifacts for Greer. And resign being way too... I, I'm not going to be able to do all of these, but I couldn't decide. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six that I'm going to try and play. I mean, look, at cooking spices is two coins. We could technically play that now. So I'm hoping she'll be able to get to all of those. We're going to make our first player Greer, so let's get going. For the first turn of the game, you are required to go to the town. So, we're going to go ahead and have Greer go to the town. He is going to go to the saloon. Now, at the saloon, he can, if he'd like, pay one food to refresh all of the uh, adventurers in the saloon, but he doesn't want to do that. Instead, he's just going to purchase or recruit one of the adventurers to go with him. Here's the five we can choose from. Now, up top, you'll see that they all provide you with a little bit of morale or heart value, and that's really important because when you go on an adventure, you're going to add up all the hearts from all of your adventures that are on your board, and that's going to give you your total morale while you're moving around the board. And you, you have to use your hearts to put camp tokens to be able to increase your die rolls. So yeah, that's really important. Swords help you with sword encounters. These eye symbols help you with searching for certain things, and then these hand symbols are skill updates. We also have one over here that also gives you an additional movement. So I think what Greer, Greer is going to do, he's going to spend all three of his coins. He's going to get this green lizard folk. So we're going to go ahead and use our three coins here, grab this guy, and then we'll immediately replace him with a new adventure. And we have, oh, this guy nice. If you have a spot on your board, you can go ahead and place that adventure right here. So you see he's from the red faction, so I have an open slot. Let's say I had the dog there. I could still move the dog around since the dog has no faction, but if I had someone else there, I couldn't place him until I decided to go into the city. For Reza's turn, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over here to, saloon, to the saloon. Now, in the competitive mode, you can still go to the saloon. This is the only place that you can go where another player is, and you don't have to duel if you don't want to. But in co-op, you never have to duel. You can always duel if you want. That can increase or decrease your reputation. But if you lose, you do go to jail. <laughs> She's going to spend her three coins for this new guy here because he gives a search, a sword, and skill. Nice. And we'll replenish that right away with this guy. Oh, from the yellow faction. Oh, and he gives some movement. Not a lot of morale, though. We'll go ahead and place this guy right here. As Riza just finished her turn, we go ahead and move the minion tracker up one space. So at the end of each of her turns, we'll move this up. And don't forget, we'll have minions coming out at each of these symbols. Greer's going to go next. He's going to go ahead and jump in to the stables. He's going to use the one food that he received from the beginning of the game because he's a fisherman to grab himself a pack bird. Now, these pack birds, what you don't see on these symbols, they'll show you right here <laughs> on the regular version of it. The pack bird will provide you with one additional movement when you're on the map. Also, it allows you to hold at least one treasure. If you have up to three of the birds, you can have three treasures that you hold. You also can discard them to ignore a threat. If you have to fight a threat and you don't want to, you can discard a pack bird so you don't have to do that. We'll place our first pack bird here. And you can see now we have a, sp a slot to hold our first treasure. 
Reese's decided that she'd like to go on an adventure. <laughs> so first thing that we do is we reset her hearts. Her heart value will be four. So she has a total of four morale based on the two hearts from both of her adventures. She'll then place her meeple right here, or if you have the basic version, the standee, and you always start off with two movement. So she could just move down to here for one movement if she'd like. She also can move over here to the Shrika Hills. And here we have a quest token. So she could go on a quest. But you see this icon? That means she has to encounter that first threat. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our chance. So we're going to take a step over here and try and move to this location. That means, though, we must encounter this bandit. Now, we already have one sword. We have to get a four or higher on a d6. This one sword, though, will add plus one to what we roll. And we get a five. Not a problem at all. Didn't even need the plus one. So what we get to do is grab that card from the top of the thread deck, and we immediately place one of our camp tokens here. This card will give us one victory point. Also, having a camp token on him will give us one victory point. And because we revealed a coin, we get to grab one coin as well. And if you're wondering where I got these, these are seven wonders upgraded coins from Broken Token. <laughs> Since we're at the Srika Hills, I think we might as well do a quest. So what we do is we look in the book for page number four. It's not page number. It's the encounter number four. Now I'm going to tell you is when we start having spoilers. <laughs> so if you don't want to read the story, feel free to stop watching here. At a trading post, a gnarled merchant in a wide leather hat stops you. I need to deliver these supplies to a camp of Copper Empire soldiers. Can I hire you to guard my caravan? Their leader, Captain Shreya, is holding my daughter hostage until the delivery is complete. So I'm just going to show you this the first time that I do this. Going forward, all I'm going to do is read you the options and then tell you which one I'm doing. But normally, if you're playing this cooperatively, you don't get to see what the benefit is or what even the story is. The person only reads Guard the Caravan and tells you what the skill test is, Combat 5, or Skill 8, Rescue the Merchant's Daughter. Now, there are two different options here, because if I get a 5 or a 6, I read just this top one, or I just get this top benefit, but if I get plus 2 or higher than that combat number 5, so if I get a total of 7, I also gain a coin. So this means you can use hearts or um, items that you have to increase your total roll. Obviously, because you're only rolling a d6, how are you going to get a skill 8 roll? As much as I would like the plus two population, the yellow faction, and gaining a keyword, I think I'm going to have to just do the combat because I think I only have to roll a four or higher here. I have to roll a six to get this, or I have to use hearts. And I'd really not like to use hearts if I don't have to because I want to build a camp this round as well. Here we go for combat five. Oh, we've got a five right here. We have plus one because of that one adventure. So I think I'm going to go ahead and spend one heart so we get a total of seven. You help take the supplies to the Imperial camp. Rows of tents line the hill and fly the rust-colored banner of hammer and nail. I've heard whispers that they've traveled here seeking the power of an ancient lost city, says the merchant unloading packages from his row of irritable pack birds but don't laugh if any of them tell you that so we gain plus one reputation we gain a green faction and a coin we'll move our reputation up by one we'll also gain a green faction and a coin now having this green faction banner will allow us to purchase green adventures for one coin less also, for every green adventure that we have, it'll also make green adventures one less. So right now, we could buy a green adventure that's at a level two cost of coin for free, which is not bad. Now, I do have to show that I also had to use one heart to make that total amount be a seven instead of a five so that we got that plus one coin. Our final step for our turn is we're going to go ahead and spend three hearts, so we have no hearts left, to build a camp. Now, if I grab another camp token, what's great is your first two are going to give you coins. So she just got another coin. Also, notice that she has two eye symbols here. That's going to be important. 
because since she's building in a location that has a coin symbol, she gains coins equal to the amount of eye symbols on all of her adventures and treasure cards. So she's going to gain two more coins. <laughs> she is rolling in the dough. Not only that, don't forget the goal of the game or what we have to do is have at least one player put out all 14 of their tents. She has already put out two in the second turn. Not bad. Now, no one else can read that quest, so we remove the quest token, and she is now done with her turn. The clock slowly ticks. We'll move the minion tracker here. Moving to Greer's turn, he is not going to go on the map yet. He's going to go ahead and explore the mine. So he's going to place his meeple here to say he's going there. Let's move to the mine. Here we have the start of the mine. Now, we look to see how much movement we have. As Greer, we only have two movement. So what we can do is move up to two times in the mine. If where we are starting, there's a downspout, we can go ahead and move down or we can move to the right. Now, after we've explored the mine a bit, if there's a downspout from a card above us, we can move up there. But if there isn't one up there, we cannot do that. You cannot explore up unless we already have one there. I think for our first movement, we're going to go ahead and explore in that location. And, ooh, that looks not bad. So we immediately have to move there. And you know what? I'm not going to move again because this is going to give us one reputation, one gem, and one coin. And I was kind of looking for a coin and a gem, and I got both of them. And the reputation, not bad. So the first time you place a camp token inside of the mine, you don't have to pay anything. So we'll place this here. And then just like Riza, because that first camp token has a coin underneath it, we'll gain a coin for that. We also will gain a gem and another coin because that's what we get for placing a camp token here. And finally, we'll gain one beautiful reputation. Nice. Moving to Riza's turn, she's going to move back to town. Now, whenever you move back to town, you don't have to move on the map. You can immediately come back to town. The big thing is you do not reset your hearts. So her heart level is still at zero right now. She's going to go to the saloon again, but she doesn't like these options. None of them are amazing, and they almost all, except for one, only give her one additional morale. So she's going to pay the one food that she had at the beginning of the game to replenish all five of these. Here's her five new ones, and now she has the option to buy one or to recruit one. Now, you guys, just because I'm terrible, I do want to tell you the different types of factions we have. We have nomads, we have mystics, we have outlaws, and the red ones are lizard folk. And then we don't have, this guy has no faction, meaning we can place him anywhere on our board, but he is part of the expansion and he's considered factionless. I'm really tempted to get this guy because he gives us another sword and three health, he costs four. But this guy, I mean, he only gives us one heart, so that's not great, but he gives us one of everything that we want. One additional search, one additional sword, one additional skill, and one additional move. I just have a hard time passing that up. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab him. That will, of course, cost us three coins. We don't have any yellow factions on our board, so no discount. We'll grab him. It just means we're probably going to have to come back here and get another adventure very soon, but I still think it's worth it. And we'll place this guy. Ooh, he's a four cost. Yeah, he looks good. Three health. Nice. We'll place this guy right here. We have two coins left, so we're also going to go ahead and pay for this specific artifact card so that we can gain the benefit for the rest of the game. First of all, we get one journey point. But then you need not pay a heart for one skipped space per turn. And I'll explain that as we start moving more on the actual map. We'll move up another space. Next round, we're going to go ahead and see our first minion. Greer has one more stop in town before he's going to go on his own adventures. He's going to come over here to the Mystic's Hut. At the Mystic's Hut, you get to draw one treasure card per eye symbol. Well, he has two eye symbols, so we'll draw two treasure cards. He does only have one pack bird, so he's only going to be able to keep one. He can move one space on the magic track, or if he spends one gem, which is the whole reason we grab that gem, we can move ourselves 
three spaces on the spell track. And that's going to allow us to gain our first spell as well, which is why I did that. Then if we had any spells, we'd go ahead and be able to refresh them at this point. Here we have our spell track. Normally, we'd only be able to move one space, but because we spent a gem, we get to move three. Whenever you land on or go past one of these spots, on here you gain a spell. You get to draw three and choose one to keep. Our three spells are either Rejuvenation, Divination, or Transmutation. The Rejuvenation, we'd gain two hearts and one reputation. The Divination, we'd grab two eye symbols so we could get maybe more coins that way. And Transmutation, we could transmute up to four gems for two coins each. And I think this is not even a question. The Rejuvenation, gaining additional hearts and pushing up our reputation, yeah. So we'll discard the other two. Now, for our two treasure cards, we'll go ahead and flip those. We either have just a skill symbol, or we have an old journal. When you successfully complete a quest, draw one artifact, you may keep it or discard it. Oh, he doesn't have a ton of artifacts, but I do really like having some additional skill. Yeah, I think I, think I gotta go with the skill. I think that's gonna be more useful in the short term. Riza likes her adventuring, so she's going to go ahead and jump herself onto the map. So we count up our hearts, two, four, five. We'll start with five hearts. Let's see where we want to go. We've got a total of three movement, one from here and two as our generic starting amount of movement. We'll have her start over here in Eastery. So total of three movement. She's going to spend one movement to move here. Don't have to worry about her hearts. We're good. Her second movement, she's going to move to here. Normally, she'd have to lose one heart for passing an empty space. If that space had had a camp token in it, she would not lose a heart for moving through that space. But she does have to, except for the fact that she has that artifact that allows her to ignore it, those spices. Th those allow her to ignore one time when she would lose a heart. She has one more movement. She's going to go ahead and move to the Crimson Cave. But moving there and moving through another space that's empty is going to cause her to lose one health or one morale. But we also get to read another quest, quest number one. She'll go from five hearts down to four. You find a square door inside a shallow cave. Massive chains cross the face, as if someone were protecting a great treasure. You spend the day cutting at the chains until you finally break through. Inside in the pale beams of your lanterns you find not a pile of gold, but a lone man sitting on a rock. As he stands, a red cape falls at his back, and he draws a hefty stone sword. His face is not flesh, but stone, and his eyes are empty and glowing. I am the Red King. I have been unfairly trapped here for many years, ever since the Great Arzan Wars. Help me out of this place, and I will remember you when I rule this land again. We have either skill 7, attempt to shut the door and keep the Red King locked inside, or skill 5, guide the Red King to the surface. Now I just want you to know, the last time that we played this, we did not realize that one of the bosses was the Red King, aka he's not a good person. So generally I kind of lean towards trying to keep the door shut, but I have to make a skill 7 test. And I only have, oh, I guess I have three hands. Actually, that's not terrible. I have three hands on my adventures. So that means I just have to roll a four or higher to be able to pass this. I actually, I think I can do that. Three plus six. <laughs> okay, six plus three is nine. That actually exceeds it by two. So we get the additional benefit. You leap out of the chamber, throwing your weight against the door, but it's too late. The door bursts open in a gust of wind, throwing you backwards. The Red King climbs the stairs, leaving you in the cave with a feeling of overwhelming dread. At least you find a few treasures in the now empty room. Plus one reputation, red faction, coin, Q1, which is our first side quest, I love that, and a gem. In our backpack, we'll go ahead and gain that red faction, the gem, and the coin. We'll bump up our reputation to two. Nice. And then last but not least, we'll place Q1 here in our side quest. Now the next time we do a quest, we read Q1 instead of whatever is there. And I forgot to do this last time. We completed a quest last 
turn or a couple turns ago. We've completed our second quest. If we complete a third one, we gain one experience point. Well, honestly, that was pretty thematic because we're going to move to the next turn and we have to spawn our first minion. Our first minion will be a minion that will go to the town hall. We have an immediate effect that all players will lose one reputation. Now, if we can defeat him, whoever defeats him will gain three reputation. So yeah, we lose one, but actually if we can defeat him, we'll gain three. So that's a net of two. I like that. Granted, this is hitting two people, so it's really a net of one. <laughs> Both of our reputations will go down by one. And we'll go ahead and place this minion here right above the town hall. Now, I totally forgot to do something that I wanted to do on Reza's turn. So I'm going to take one step back and create another camp uh, on the spot that she's at. Sorry about that. This will be her third camp, which is pretty good. Greer hasn't, well, he's, he's put one camp. That's it. We'll also have to spend the three health to do this. The nice thing about doing this too is since we have three eye symbols, we also now gain three coins, which is awesome. We are becoming rich. While Riza is all about going on her adventures, Greer is much more calculated. <laughs> and because of that, although he really should probably go on an adventure by now, he's not. He's gonna go to the saloon one more time because he sees one more adventure he really likes, this gal right here. It's gonna cost him two coins. The reason he likes her, two health, not bad, gives a sword, also not bad, but this magic symbol. Now, every time he goes to the mystic hut going forward, he'll gain one additional magic influence. Nice. We'll replenish that spot with this guy, and he's a blue, yeah, three health though, not bad for two coins. We'll go ahead and move the dog over here and we'll place her right here. And now we have a total of seven hearts for our adventure that we're gonna have to go on next turn because we spent way too much time in the town, but I feel good. First thing is gonna do on her turn is go ahead and spend her four coins to get the merchant coat. This allows her that when she goes to the, the town hall, she may trade twice. Normally you can only do one trade, the five for one or one to five. Now she can do it twice, which gives you a lot more flexibility. And three journey points, nice. She's then gonna move herself to the stables and spend one gem to get a turtle. Turtles are just a little bit better than the pack, uh, the pack birds because they allow you once a round or once per turn to ignore losing one heart on an empty space. So now she has two ways of ignoring a heart loss, which is great. They will also allow her to hold a treasure. After five turns, Greer is finally ready to go on an adventure. Looking at his board, he has two, plus three is five, plus two is seven total hearts. Nice. He'll start off over here in Eastery. He has a total of three movement. He'll move himself here from one space. Second space, he'll move here. He'll lose one heart, go down to six, and then he'll use his third one to come here to the witch's path. That's going to put him down to five health. Let's go ahead and read this quest. As you sit on the side of the road for a rest, you spot a few wiggling fingers sticking out of the dirt. You rush to dig and soon unearth a green-skinned woman. She gulps in some fresh air, brushes dirt from her decaying skin and torn clothes. Goodness, I've been under there for a long time, she says, picking maggots from her protruding arm bone. Could you deliver a message to my family in Eastry? I don't want them to see me in my current state, but they need to know that Nizra the witch did this to me. We either have skill 5, deliver the message to her family, or skill 7, help the woman confront Nizra. Oh, come on. We have to confront Nizra. Sounds terrible. We need a 9. We have two hands to start with. And we roll. Are you? Wow. Is this die only going to roll 6s? That's awesome. 6 plus 2 is 8. So we need to spend at least one heart. And I think that's all we're going to do. We're just going to spend one heart. And then we're going to go ahead and use our rejuvenation right now to gain two hearts and increase our reputation by one. Did I say skill seven or skill nine? I don't know. But it was skill seven. Since I got nine, I get to get, uh, obtain the additional bonus. Wow, that's nice. 
you track down the witch to her camp in some ancient ruins. She stands near her cooking fire, doning a tall purple hat. You draw your weapons. I will have my revenge, says the witch, narrowing her eyes at you. With a wave of her hand, she transforms the undead woman into her living self again, and you escort the woman back to Estri. Plus one reputation, so we'll get two reputation, yellow faction, and we get to gain the keyword Nizra. Plus we gained a coin. So here's our uh, yellow faction and our coin. We've placed Nizra in our keyword area here. Now other quests may use the word Nizra or have that in there. If you have keyword Nizra, something different will happen. Mm, I love this. So who knows what's going to happen? And we'll go ahead and gain our two reputation. One for the quest and one because of our spell. We're also going to spend three hearts to place a camp in that location. We do only have two eyes, which means we only get to draw two or gain two gems. How we know it's gems is there is a gem in this location. But we also gain a coin because that was only our second camp, to, um, uh, camp token that we've put out. So we'll gain one coin and we'll gain two gems. We can't forget to also fill in one of these boxes. That was our first quest we've completed. Moving to Riza, I think we're going to go ahead and go on another adventure. <laughs> so a total of five hearts. She'll reset herself to five. Let's do this. With Risa, I think we're going to go ahead and move this way. So we're going to sp spend one movement here. Movement two is here. We're going to ignore one health loss here. Movement three is we're going to move to here. We're going to ignore this health loss. Unfortunately, our final movement, movement four, we're going to have to lose one health to do that. And we're going to have to fight the threat that's on the top of the threat deck. We have ourselves a raider. Now, if we defeat this raider, we do increase our reputation and we'll gain one journey point at the end of the game. We have a total of two swords, so we just need to roll a three or higher. I've had two sixes in a row. Let's go for a third six. Ow, that is a one. Plus the two is a three, so we're going to have to use two precious hearts to go to five. That does mean we defeat this raider, but it's at a cost. <laughs> that stinks. We had to use one heart to spend that one additional movement. And then, what was that? Two hearts? No, three hearts to get ourselves up to five to, to defeat that threat. <sighs> so I think I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm not going to try the quest because I don't want to fail the quest. And I don't think it's going to be likely that I'm going to pass it. <laughs> so I think we're going to just stop there. Finally, we'll move ourselves up one space. And I think with that, we're going to stop our video here. I think that's long enough. It's getting a little late for me. So let me know what you think. Do you feel like I'm doing everything right? I think I am. I had to learn both the base rules and the expansion and then the co-op rules. So I might have messed up a couple things here or there. So let me know so I can make sure to mention it in the next video. But I hope you guys are enjoying this. I am loving this. I love the adventure and the worker placement aspect. So having both, yeah, it's pretty enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you at the next stop. 